Welcome, welcome everyone to my Best Life Academy. I am your coaching consultant, Dr. Sherry. I'm so excited to be with you on tonight. Get somebody, tell them they want to come on into the room because we are talking about a subject that we all know that we need. Sometimes we call it money. Sometimes we call it dinero. Sometimes we call it bread. Sometimes if you're a little bit Creole and Cajun all wrapped up at the same time, you say that Lajon. But whatever you say, we all realize that at some point we're going to need it. So go ahead and hit your sisters and tell them, come on over. They don't want to miss this. Somebody in the chat. Tonight, tonight, we are talking about missing money. Yeah, missing money. It's that master moment, guys, and we need it. I have thought about this for a little while. And as we talked on last week, if some of you were here, and I hope you were here, we talked about burnout and what it means, what it is, what it means, how it affects us, how it takes us from our day in and day out life, what all of that is about. But tonight, not only does burnout affect us, but missing money affects us too. What do we do about that? As you guys saw my ad on today, girl, if you're missing money in your house, this is the place you want to be. We're going to talk about that tonight and how we can get it back into our home. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Hey, good to see you guys coming on over. Thanks so much for coming in. I see you. I see you. I see you. Super excited. Super excited. And later on, we're going to talk about a few more things we're going to be doing, but we're talking tonight in our master moment which we'll have a few of these as we go forward um, in the next few months, master moments that are, I think are significant to all of us. But tonight we're talking about missing money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that coach. I don't mind talking about it because we're women of faith. That's who we are. I think one of the most disturbing things that bothered me during the pandemic, aside from just having to say the pandemic, was the fact that when they said essential, many things were essential. That made sense. The medical teams, the emergency um, response teams made perfect sense. Our police officers, our fire department, it made perfect sense to me. Those who were in the oil and gas industry so that we could still have energy into our homes, those who were supplying groceries to us and putting food on our tables, that made sense to me. What did not make sense to me was that among the essential industries and entities, the church of any kind, of any faith was not essential. It didn't matter if you went to a sanctuary. It did not matter if you went to a temple. It didn't matter if you were at the mosque. It did not matter. It was not essential. That grabbed me. Why not? What were they saying to us? They said it in one word, actually two words, not producing. That's what that meant. I began to go back and look at what is it about us? We're strong. We're intelligent. We have all these things going on, but we're not essential. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If anybody should have been on the front line during the pandemic, it should have been people of faith. All of us should have locked arms and begin praying, meditating, whatever it is you do, we should have been doing it together, but we weren't essential because they deemed us non-productive. Liquor industry was productive. Yeah, it, it, yeah, somebody was gonna get it to you. Zips, specs, somebody was gonna get it. It was essential. And whether you like it or not, whether you think that it ought to be um, brought into law or approved or not, doesn't matter. But there were a whole lot of Ubers on the road bringing about our favorite weed bringing about our doobies, bringing about, uh, yeah, I know, even if you didn't have enough money, you can go ahead and get a little Reggie until you can get the doobie or the primo or the reefer or whatever it is you need. They were essential, but not women or people of faith. Tonight, we're talking about why we are missing money. It said we weren't productive, and so we weren't essential. Tonight, we're going to talk about this and how we can get it back and get into what we call an essential arena. Well, you know, we've been talking about this particular passage that's near and dear to my heart, and this is the way I, I look at things. I get strategies from it. I get structure from it, 
and I get streams of income from it. So we're going to talk about this tonight. You know, we talked about last week, that is those five wise, five foolish virgins. But we get a little bit farther down into that text and it reads a little bit like this. I'm just going to read a little snippet, if I may, just for tonight. That's okay. We'll, we'll read just a little snippet of it. All right. And, and it said it like this, 25th chapter, at midnight, there was a cry that went out. And, and here's the bridegroom, they said, come out to meet him. Everybody wakes up. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit so we can get on into this thing. Foolish ones and the wise. And, and the foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But wise people know better. They know if you're foolish, you're probably not going to bring it back. And if you bring it back, you may not bring it back in time. So they said no. And the story goes on. They say, go and buy some instead. Well, while they were gone, the bridegroom actually arrived. And the ones that were ready, that's the wise ones, they got to go in. Later, the others came and said, hey, open the door for us. In fact, how come y'all didn't just leave it open? But our Lord knows something. He didn't even let the wise ones answer. He answered himself. He said, I'm telling you the truth. I really don't know you. Because it doesn't seem like you were essential. It doesn't seem like you thought I was essential. And so it concludes you need to keep watch because you don't know the day or the hour he's coming. What does that have to do about money? I'm so glad you asked because we got three tips to find your missing money. And they come right out of this passage. You know, the same ones we've been reading Sunday after Sunday and we walk out. It sounds real good at the time but we're not applying it and we're not seeing the results. Tonight, we're gonna apply it. First thing that I saw in this real quickly was that there was the oil of preparation. Yeah, there was the oil of preparation. They had this oil and what is oil for us? If you think about it in its simplest um, definition or what it actually does or, or um, the qualities of it, the qualities are that it's hydrophobic, and it's lipophilic, fancy way of saying it doesn't like water, but it does like other things that are fat, kind of like it. And so it's got two characteristics of it in the same thing. What does that say to us as women of faith, as women who have our money missing? It means that we have some qualities in us that allow us to float on top of things that should drown us. That means that when we get into situations called hard times, we're designed to float above that thing and it should not drown us. And therefore we become essential. What does it mean to attract things that are fat like us? Well, we fat with power, we're fat with intellect, we're fat with favor, we're fat with, with um, um, certain characteristics and certain traits and certain abilities, certain skill sets. We're fat with all of that. And we tend to attract like folks, like minds, if you will, that's going somewhere. The other thing it tells us is that even when we get in the mix of those who look like us, but sometimes don't think like us and don't think we ought to be there, we're somehow able to get right in there in the midst of them without being exposed and still reach our destination. Yeah, that's one of your first tips to how you can get the money back. We're talking about the oil of preparation. And so we have something. These wise women had something with them, women of faith, and it was the oil of preparation and they were carrying it very well. They were protecting it. And what they were saying is that I have also something that's not only hydrophobic, meaning I can float on water, I can float over hard times and tough times when it comes to it. I know how to tighten my belt and I know how to make a dollar seem like it's five dollars. I can make 10 seem like it's 20. And if you don't watch me, I'll make that 20 look like a good C note. That's my ability. And he placed it in us. Somewhere along the way, we forgot that a penny saved will soon be a dollar earned. And so this ability that we have in us is not only that and the, and the lipophilic one where we can just mix in with folks that are fat and they think they have it all together, success, and maybe they don't think we have it, but we get right in there until we know where we're going, but we're also volatile or we can be non-volatile. I like the volatile aspect because that means we can be explosive. 
What that means is that when I don't see my way out, I do something that I can cause to be my way out. What does that mean? It's an innate ability to blaze trails where they are none. And so we become our own trailblazers. Yeah, we become pioneer women. Let me slow this down and give you a part of the keys that are sitting here within this particular tip. Actually, I just want to give you one example. When you say pioneer woman, we think of one beautiful red headed lady, but she had a dream. You see, because women of faith, they're not always career women as the way we think of it, professional women leaving outside of the home. Many of them are career women in being homemakers. I think we've underestimated the power of our homemakers. She was a homemaker and she needed to make ends meet. She was known to cook extremely well, but somehow cooking well in her own kitchen was not what she was born to do only. She was born to develop these recipes and somehow mass produce them, feeding neighbors, neighborhood children, and her community. Pretty soon word got out and somebody wanted to know about this pioneer woman that could just cook like nobody's business in open territory. Before we knew it, she was on the Food Network. She had her own channel and she became a household name. How did she do that? the oil of preparation. That is preparing meals. That's what she was called to do. That was her oil. That's what she carried, um, you know, to those cookouts and those meetings at the church where we all just potluck, so to speak. Hers stood out every time. That potluck then began to be an industry for her. All of a sudden, people wanted to know, why do you wear those tops the way you do? She was just protecting a little bit of the mommy tummy, but that became a part of the oil of preparation. Somebody wanted to know, what about those pots and things you cook out of? All of a sudden, Walmart had a whole row of them. You see, she took her oil of preparation beyond the kitchen. And when her area could not contain exactly what she needed or what she was born to do, she exploded onto the scene became a trailblazer, and we call her the pioneer woman. What are you a pioneer of? You might want to be writing some things down right now as we speak, and I hope you have your tablets with you. I hope you got your phone out with your notes section. Well, however you do this thing, I hope whatever is dropping in the atmosphere, because this thing is anointed, I'm telling you, go ahead and put your notes down. We're just talking to you today about missing money. You've underestimated, we've underestimated the oil of preparation. What is it? I'm going to stay on number one for just a few moments because we got about five keys here, five qualities rather, or characteristics of what it does. The first thing is that it's fuel. That's what they were using it for. Um, it can heat, it can light your way. It's, it's a great lamp. But what do you think about when others light the way for you? What do you think about those people? What do you call them? Well, the Dallas Cowboys called them for many years, Tom Landry. Yeah, they called him coach. He lit the way and I got to tell you, even though he's gone and on the other side, they probably could use him right now. But he led them to the first championships and many thereafter because he knew how to light the way. He knew how to coach them into greatness. He knew how to take those who were just walk-ons as well as those who were in the draft and make a dream team out of it before we understood what dream team meant. How did he do that? He understood the oil of his preparation. He was to be fueled for an industry. Many have tried to duplicate, but none of them could really imitate the man that just not knew how to wear that particular hat. Yeah, that's Mr. Tom Landry. What are you called to do? Are you called to light somebody's pathway? Are you called to be their coach? Are you called to be their mentor? Are you called to be their pastor? Are you called to be their leader in a group session? Are you called to be the coach that's going to take your little league team and make it, make it to the World Series in baseball? What are you called to do? What is that oil? of preparation designed to do. It's more than for just sitting on your shelf. And sad to say, that's where much of the church leaves it, on the shelves 
in their sanctuary, in their respective places of faith, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every Friday, Monday, whatever day you have, every Saturday, they leave it right there and they take it no further. The wise women and even the foolish women knew to put it on the move. What about us? Not only is it fuel, it's also considered food. What types of things have we seen? Well, we have that olive oil. We always talk about it being healthy. We have that coconut oil, great for your skin and your hair. And we have something called avocado oil, just to name a few of them. They're in the food industry. And that doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's considered intake. What can you bring in? You see, because that's money. How can you bring it in? That's money. And when do you bring it in? That's money. Well, I'm giving you some examples here because I don't want you to take just what I'm saying as my opinion, but I love to give you examples when we're talking about this. And we have an example. There was a lady that was behind on her mortgage. She was a single mom with these sons. She couldn't figure her way out of that thing. But somehow, every time they had a gathering, everybody asked for a particular dessert. She was known to make it like nobody could make it. And one of her friends said, why don't you do this and we'll help you? Well, she ran into a whole lot of challenges, y'all. But somewhere along the way, she got her break because she kept doing what she was good at and what she knew she was good at. When she didn't have a job, when she didn't have child support coming from her husband, when she didn't have a pension, when it looked like even the government wasn't going to step in and help her. She kept doing what she could do well. We now know the story as the apple mortgage cake. Yeah, she became famous for that thing, but she paid that mortgage off one cake at a time. What is it you're called to do? Are you called to fry that chicken? I've got some cousins on the line and some family members that do that. I'm telling you, they can challenge any fried chicken industry. I'll put them up against it, against anybody. They just have a knack for it. What are you called to do? Is that your intake? Is that how you bring it in through your kitchen where the heart of the home is? Is that what you do? Or have you just somehow negated that? or minimize those capabilities that you make mac and cheese that everybody clamors for and screams for, even when it's not the holidays. Is that you? Okay, so that's our example here with, for food. And so we have free fuel, food, and then medical. You know, that's my industry, I actually like it. And there's something called mineral oil. It's used for a number of things, even to kind of help our, di our digestive system to move things on through the way they do. But do you have a special knack to assist people with their dietary needs? Do you have a special knack that can just make up these cures, these concoctions? Do you do things that nobody else knows to do? A few weeks ago, a few months ago, my cousins came over. They were talking about this arthritis they had. And I said, hey, we got some moss out here. We mixed up a wonderful concoction. And one of them came back and said, I hadn't heard all day. Hmm. We have things all around us. I didn't have to write a script. I didn't have to pull out my stethoscope. We just had it all around us. And we had keen insight of what to do and how to do it. Is there a research in you? Is there a cure in you? Who knows? You may be holding the cure for cancer, breast cancer, as we speak on this line. But you haven't tapped into the oil of preparation because somebody told you you weren't smart enough. Somebody told you you weren't good enough. Somebody told you that you couldn't get the resources or the finances to support your study and then walk forth in the area that you know you're called to. The question is, why did you believe them? What were they doing when they said it? Sometimes birds of a feather mm -hmm, and they want you to flock together. Learn to be an eagle and not a buzzard. Moving on. I'm looking to make sure we don't have questions. Ah, I see you guys. 
Okay, you got your notes in there. We're still dealing with the oil of preparation because that's really where the money started missing. And it started missing with the five foolish. Not only do we have fuel, food, medical as one of the qualities or the characteristics of this oil of preparation, but we also have lubrication. You know, that motor oil, that if you don't put it in the car, uh, we got some guys that get real upset with us. In fact, some of them will just keep an eye on it for you so that you don't throw a rod, blow your whole motor because we didn't stop and put motor oil in it every 1500, every 2000. What is it doing? It's making sure that things can move very easily in that engine and circulate the gas and the fuel and all the things that we need to keep that car on the road. And then as women of faith, some of us hit the second half and yeah, we need a little stimulation with second nature. We're not gonna go there right now, but we have some lubrication as well. Suppose you came up with something that would help women of our demeanor and our grand characteristics in this second nature. Could you be an overnight success? You just might, but you haven't used the oil of your preparation. You see, we've been sitting in the building too long and we haven't come out of the walls long enough to apply the oil of preparation to our own lives. Yeah, we going in. We going in, okay? We going in. I think that was PG enough, what y'all think? Okay, great. Okay, we have our, our first lady here, Dr. Marge. I'm so glad she's here. Thank you, Dr. Marge. I think that was PG. Um, bless you. <laughs> we not only have the lubrication, but we have manufacturing. You know, my husband works for Exxon, and Exxon is known to produce plastic that goes all around the world. Um, they do different paints and materials. In fact, they've made not only millions, but billions. How did they do that? They came up with an idea and they tested that idea and it looked like it worked. I don't think any of us can go anywhere in our house and not see plastic in some form or fashion. Even the areas around these PC devices that we have in our hands or on our phones, they have some element of plastic, of paint, of some type of material that had to be manufactured. It started as an idea and they took that idea and ran with it. And because of that, they employed millions of people around the globe. One idea did that. One concept did that. What about you and I? What idea has the Holy Spirit given us? What idea or concept has he given us when we walked past a store, when we were riding with our family and it dropped, but we discounted that thing? We devalued it is what we did. That'll never work. Suppose they had said that over at DuPont, over at Exxon. Suppose they had said that. What would we be putting that leftover food in? It wouldn't be Ziploc bags. You'd be using some of your good dishes out and hoping the kids didn't destroy the family heirloom running through the house or outside. Yeah, that's what would happen. But somebody took the idea and said, we're going to test it. We're going to try it. We may have some failures, but I think this thing is going to work. And it did. Now they have patents. They have inventions. They have trademarks that nobody can touch. Why? They ran with their idea. Why is your idea still sitting in your mind? Why is your idea still sitting as a doodle or a scribble in a book or a notebook that you can't even put your hands on at this moment. Why is it sitting there? That may be the breakthrough to come out of generational poverty, generational debt, and walk into generational wealth. But we put the idea aside because it probably won't work. Well, let me just give you this little secret. It won't work if you don't use it. It won't work 
if you don't go find that notebook. It won't work if you won't test it and be willing, be willing to be responsible and accountable for the idea, the concept that the maker knows will work, which is why he gave it to you. Now, the process we go through may have some ups and some downs, and it may look like some doors are in our face. But let me tell you this, whenever he drops it, it's money in the bank. And the only time it isn't is because it's money still locked in your notebook. That's missing money. Yeah, we're going in tonight because, see, we read these as one thing. But I'm telling you, one of the many gifts he's given me is to walk through these scriptures and find the secrets, find out what's missing and to start applying it. That's why I'm sitting here. Like you, I didn't think it had much value, but I'm finding out that it really does. In fact, he put the CIA in 66 books. That's what he did for us. We just don't believe it. We read it one way and we sit down and we think that's the only way it goes. Mm -mm. He tells us from faith to faith and from glory to glory for a reason, because I'm going to stretch that measure until I get to the next measure. And when I get you to that measure, I'm going to stretch you to the next measure. And when I get you to that one, I'm going to stretch you again. Why am I doing that? Because I want my glory to be seen in an idea, a concept that everybody else said wouldn't work until it does work. And here we are. Okay. All right. I think we're doing pretty good. Yep. Pretty good on time too. Y'all good out there? All right. I just want to make sure. All right. All right. Looks like a real good. Last one we have is purifying. That's what the oil of preparation was. That's why these wise women took care of it. These women of faith, they took care of it. They not only took care of what they brought out of the house in the lamp, but they took care of the extra that they had as well. That means they already had some things that were operating well in their own house. Now it was time to take excess beyond the house and see how it worked out there too. Because if it works in my house, it ought to work beyond my house. Are we teaching real good? We're not upsetting anybody, getting on anybody's nerves because I don't want to hurt your feelings, but we got to be honest. This is how we're missing money. If the concept works in my house, if it works in my home, if it works for my family, it's going to work beyond the doors. Why are we still locked away? Scared, peeping. I don't know. I just don't want them to know because just in case, you know, it doesn't light outside the way it does inside. I'm going to wait and give you a moment. I know my eyes do things. I've been working on mirror ministry, but it had kicked in lately. So face back. I think that's better. Why then are we not operating with the same concepts, strategies, and structure beyond the house that works in the house? Just somebody give me an answer, anybody. I know. I like the laughter. I like I like those those right there. That's kind of cool. We have no real explanation, do we? No, we don't. We don't. And so if the the cleansing and the things designed to remove the residue of doubt, the residue of fear, the residue of frustration. If it works well in the house, it'll work well beyond the house and help you get your concept, your idea, your patent, your invention, whatever he's dropped beyond the house. And whatever it can do in the house, it can do beyond the house. In fact, it can do it better. Okay, because we're going to get all of this out tonight. Y'all need to shake anything out right now? I know, I know, I know, I know. 
we've been hammering, we've been hammering, we've been hammering home. I'm gonna play some of these. Usually I play them at the end, but I just want you to see some of this. Um, yeah, Mr. Deborah, I think she was over here. She was laughing for a second. And then we're gonna get back to teaching. I always like to do this. And and Dr. Margie, oh, bless you. She said, I'm teaching good. So I wasn't too bad on that other point over there. Um, my sister. <laughs> Yolanda, uh, God bless you tonight. Your sister Deborah, Keisha, we see you. Okay, all these things, just plan a few so we can break it up for just a second. We just want you to breathe. It's okay. Take a deep breath because we're talking about missing money. And we're bringing it back to our home now. It's not going to miss my house, not in this season. Okay, just make that declaration for me right now. It's not going to miss my house. And at the end, not in this season. Just add it. Add it. Just make the declaration. I have to do it myself. It is not going to miss the good old house. Not in this season. Yeah, that's what's happening. Okay. That's what we're doing. All right. We're going back. We're good. So the oil of preparation, first step, we have to spend a little time with that because that's where the bulk of the work is. And these next two won't take quite as long. Just had to drill that for a second. The second one, after the oil of preparation, with all of the qualities that we just mentioned, that is fuel, food, medical, lubrication, manufacturing, purifying, we just stop right there. There are really 72 uses in a day that oil has. Y'all can go check that out on your own. I wouldn't give you 72 tonight. I just pulled six up. But they're really about 72 plus. You see, we're just scraping the surface, just in case you're wondering, the possibilities of the oil that's been prepared in you for this season is endless. It's endless. It's endless. Baby, if they steal one idea, oh, that's fine. You know, if, if they just got it away from you, that's okay. Why? He gave you a creative device sitting right here that's in touch with the creator. If that one was created, he's got another one. Okay. Feel sorry for them that they couldn't come up with an original idea, but you can. Feel sorry for them that they couldn't come up with an original concept, but you can. Feel sorry for them that they don't have an original invention, but you got several. George Washington Carver had many. And we're still eating beyond the peanut butter jar. We're enjoying devices because of him. This next one, we walking right on in. Not only was there the oil of preparation, but we have opening portals. I wish I could tell you how many pictures we've gotten lately of what looks like just the sky coming down and then opening up as a curtain. And people have been sending text messages and inboxing me, messaging me with open heavens. Here they had an open portal. How do we know that? Because when the cry came at midnight, nothing opened up right then. I just wanna, wanna make that point for a second. Sometimes it's gonna be the darkest night where the sound comes out and it's gonna sound like relief, but you don't see an opening yet. Because see, while we were driving, my cousin and I, one day to Houston, we were going to an event. And I mean, the rain was coming down like sheets. We could hardly see. And I'm driving that SUV and my cousin's looking on the phone. And all of a sudden, the rain stopped as if somebody gave it a command and said, let the sun through. And in the midst of the clouds, still black and dark, and we just come out of the sound of thunder, it was just roaring thunder and rain. We could hardly hear ourselves talk. But when we got to that point, the rain ceased, the thunder was quiet, and there was the cloud opening up like a curtain and nothing but sunlight coming through. It was an opening of a portal. And I told my cousin, take a picture. It's an open heaven. He's just told us something. You see, the sound was back there, but the opening was up here. In between the sound and the opening, you may have to travel a little bit. It may look like things are still closed to you. It may look like a closed door because see, the
the wise and the foolish were there at the same time to hear the same sound, but only the wise got the opening of the portal. Y'all better stay with me. This stuff better than I thought. And in the opening was the bridegroom on the other side. The party was going on over there. The celebration was going on over there. The favor was going on over there. The connections were going on over there. The resources were going on over there. The gold, the silver, it said, it was all going on over on the other side of the open portal. And the five foolish virgins were off to go back to get the oil that they didn't bring with them because they didn't think that it could do outside of the house. I almost want to do a mic drop, but I'm not. I hope I'm helping you tonight. I hope I am. Because this is pivotal for women of faith now. We can't keep sitting on our oil, y'all. We can't keep doing that. We have generations and people we are called and assigned to. And we gotta be able to use what he's given us to get to the places he's called us to. We can't do that. It's not even wasting oil now. We are just not even picking it up. Okay. All right, thank you, my baby. My baby did the mic drop for me. I didn't mean to, but thank you for doing that. So opening of portals, what are these? These are opportunities for your oil, listen to this, to walk you into an area that you otherwise would not be able to walk into because you couldn't see it. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like the scales coming off, the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, and all of a sudden it says right here. The oil does that. Yeah, it, it opens when portals are open. It knows where to go. And so it says that, I, I'm, okay, let me just break this down for a second. I know what you're saying. That's all good. That's good, Dr. Sher. I appreciate that. That was real good. It's a great lesson. But look, um, I, I got a job. Mm -hmm. I'm working girl. Look, I'm a working girl. I got steady check coming in and look, my pension hits on the first and the 15th. So I don't even know why you're talking to me because I'm retired. I've done what I need to do. And I don't even see why we even having this conversation. I'm just going to ask you a question. Is that all you've been created to do? I'll wait. Mm, okay. That's what I expected. Silence. Is there more? Hmm. Are you sure that's all you created to do is a nine to five and to get your pension from your nine to five, your 30 years, your 40 years? God bless you if you had more than that. We thank you for everything that you've done. But the fact that you're still breathing, I think there's more in you. So one more time, is that all that you're created to do? Okay. Somebody hit a quick answer in there for me because I believe that answer is no then have we pursued the oil? Have we pursued the opportunities? If no, then why not? What's stopping us? What's stop? Opportunities are all around us. But when you don't know what you're carrying, you won't recognize the opportunities before you. Okay. Let me break that down just a little bit. Michael Jordan, we know him to be one of the most amazing basketball players ever, for which even our current basketball players, which are great, the great LeBron, they refer back to him. Why? He did something. But guess what? Early on, since he could play so many sports, including baseball, and we saw him do a stint in his semi-retirement and go back to it. But that baseball in his hand was not quite like that basketball in his hand. And what Michael Jordan's dad did was he helped him to recognize the difference, even though he had a brief stint of semi-retirement. He helped him to see that while you can play baseball and while you can get a scholarship with baseball, 
you're better here. Guess what the world told him? They told him he was too small. You're never going to be a great forward. You're never going to be this. But that basketball had a different feel to it, y'all. That basketball said, I know there's more. That basketball said, even though I'm good at baseball, I know there's more. That basketball said that I probably could do some track and field, but this basketball just feels a little bit different. You see, it kept talking to Michael. It talked to him more than that baseball did. And he listened. Guess what that basketball did? That basketball begin to open up opportunities of postseason play. It opened up a draft, first of all. It got him to the Chicago Bulls where he stayed. And they formed a team around a guy that wasn't supposed to be there because everybody told him baseball was better. But that basketball, it kept speaking. And when the draft happened, they formulated the team around him because he understood the power of the basketball in the hands of Michael Jordan. That basketball then opened up opportunities for team. One of his team members, Scotty Pippen, all he had to do was feed him. He knew what to do with that one. It formulated a team and that team became its own championship team in postseason play year after year with championship after championship. I think they were about to run out of fingers. You see, with the basketball in his hands, he could recognize opportunities in the sports arena of the NBA that he never would have seen in the MLB. I know, I know, y'all. I'm, I'm just trying to help you right now. Some of us, let me just put this out here, you're carrying the wrong ball. That one won't recognize the opportunities with your name on it. You're looking at Sister Sally, you're looking at, you know, Brother James, you, you're looking at um, Sister Paula May, you're looking at, okay, um, little sissy down the street, you're looking at what, what did he give you? What did he tell you you could hold? And what's gonna open up that portal? You see that basketball opened up a whole portal, so strong that we still buying Air Jordans for those kids, and he's been retired. He's got sons in basketball now. But he's still getting those royalties off of Air Jordan, didn't he? Mm. We still recognize hang time, don't we? Okay. It opened up a portal, and there are the opportunities that are already waiting with your name on it. But it's because you knew what to bring. They knew to bring the oil. All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and try to shut this down. I know it's good, ain't it? It's real good. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying right there. Real good. We got more. We got more. Last one. Last one. Last one. Hang with me for just a few more moments. Oil of preparation, opening of portals, and then the hour of power. Well, isn't that the same thing? I mean, it's an opportunity. Doesn't that sound like saying, no, not really. Not really. You, you see, Leonard Ravenhill the favorite, I uh, love one, this quote by him. He says that the opportunity of a lifetime is in the lifetime of the opportunity. Let me repeat that one more time. The opportunity of a lifetime is in the lifetime of the opportunity. That means you have a window of time for that portal to stay open. The five foolish virgins found that out because when the five wise got in because they were ready and they were carrying the right thing in their hands, that was their ticket in to the opportunity that was already waiting on him. He said, ah, shut the door. He didn't hear Bruno Mars. Sorry, he didn't hear leave the door open. He didn't hear that song. He shut the door. Five foolish showed up after the door was shut and, and said, let, let us in. He said, what? I don't know you. Now, you got to know this is the Lord. You know, I'd have been saying, Jesus, for real. You know, you know me. You know, I've been out here waiting. You know, I fell asleep with the rest of the people until the lights went out. I just went down the street, get a little more oil to light my way until you open the door. And you should, you know, you know me. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's the hood coming out of me. 
But what was he saying when he said, I don't know you? It wasn't that he couldn't recognize them. He, he, he recognized them. Face, he, he knew them. He knew that. What he didn't recognize is the fact that they couldn't recognize a window of opportunity. Because he didn't understand that. See, he had a window in time called 33 and a half years to do his job. And he didn't miss the window. Ah, y'all, this is better than I thought. He didn't miss that window. He was ready. You got to know he'd been getting ready for 42 generations. If I had been there, I'd been saying, is it time, Father? Every time you had another gen No, not yet. Okay. I've been hanging around looking. Is it time? No, not yet. We only on 32. Okay. Is it time yet? No, it's just 38 generation. Um, about to line up those sons. Stay close. Is it, oh, we had 40. Okay. We read? No. We're 41. Okay. Uh, 40, uh, 41 and a half. Okay. But when he called up 42, here I am. Low in the book volume of the book it is written of me i'm showing up why it's a window of opportunity that i have to come in preach the kingdom and get a whole bunch of sons ready to be presented to the father that i know i ain't gonna miss this opportunity everything gonna be ready and waiting to go you know how it was when we were waiting on those trips as little kids we sleep in our clothes. They say you got to be up at five and ready to catch that bus at six. Are you going to miss it? We had our mamas up at four o'clock frying chicken because we didn't eat sandwiches and chips like the other people. We ate real meals. Val can attest to that. So we had that chicken ready. We had our potato salad over here. They had us little ice packs to cool it down. Our fruit cups. Oh, we were going to eat, but we weren't going to miss that bus. There's a window of opportunity. What am I telling you? The window of opportunity is here. What he's saying is that this is all you have this moment. Tonight is an opportunity for us to go a little deeper, to get a little closer to the things that the oil has prepared. It's the moment that interrupts our chronos, our chronological calendars, our Gregorian calendars, it's called Kairos. And Kairos, what we know about that, is an interruption in time that says, I'm giving you this window. Do you recognize it as a moment you should not miss? And you should be prepared for it. Tonight, I think we've done. I want you to join me. We've got a boot camp coming next week and you guys join us. We'll be doing master moments all, all throughout the year. But if you guys have heard something in my voice that says, I need you because I'm realizing I'm running into a Kairos moment, it's coming up. And the oil of my preparation, well, I hadn't packed it as well as I should. It may be there's an open portal that's opening in front of me. I think it's there, but I hadn't prepared to recognize it because I've been carrying the wrong things. If that's you, we'll see you. You get to work with me. But next week is a free boot camp. We're going to work with you guys for three nights next week. One hour. We'll have everything up for you tomorrow. And it'll be up a little bit before midnight. Completely free. I just need you to register to know we're here. You need VIP? We got that too. But tonight, I felt this was important. It's a master moment. And I felt we couldn't miss it. It's missing money. Missing opportunities. Missing windows within the opportunity. I pray somebody go back home tonight or stand wherever you are and look your house over. Start with yourself in the mirror and then look at your spouse. Don't count them out. Look at your children. Don't count them out. 
Look at your grandchildren. I don't care. They may be one, they may be two, but I guarantee you they pack an oil, baby. Do not underestimate that and those that God has entrusted to you and I. We're done for tonight. All of those who have uh, joined us, MBLA, y'all go over to the MBLA Facebook page. Just join. It's going to be a great society. We're just great family. That's what we want. And to create an atmosphere for women of faith where you can share. We're not talking about self-promotion and, you know, all that other stuff. We're talking about sharing the goodness of God, sharing when you have a win, sharing when God does something amazing for you, because that encourages the next person. We want to have sites of inspiration there that stirs us into moving. And no, I'm not predicting another pandemic, pandemic, et cetera. We're really not out of this one. But I pray that should we have to go through something else, and there are things out there in the prophetic that says we ought to be getting ready, gardens, etc. I'm giving you a few hints right now. Get your stuff in order, get ready, but the church ought to be on the first line. Women of faith, men of faith as essential. They ought never count us out again after this production season. I promise you that one. Okay. That's all we got. So for those who have um, subscribed with me, sent you a link a little while ago, we want you to join us on Zoom backstage for just a few moments, um, chat, catch up, just to have a little fun, but to thank you. And um, well, we'll talk then. Okay. Thanks so much, guys, for joining in with me. I'll be sending information. Go to MBLA Facebook page or DrSherryLeads.com. You can get your free tickets right there to the boot camp on next week. And that's what you'll need for admittance to that boot camp. Completely free. You got no reason to go there. We just need some information. Get your free ticket. Tell somebody, come on over, hang out with us because he's dropping things like this and so much more. Okay. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you then. You guys have a blessed night. I love you guys to life. I thank God for this amazing opportunity. But mostly at this point, I thank him for leading us into plain pathways full of his goodness. And next thing, well, I'll teach that next week. I can't go into that. But let me tell you, there's plenty to go around, y'all. Okay, talk to you then. Have a good one.